Do we want to emphasize our ethnic and religious uh, differences and exploit them to buy votes or emphasize what unite us and the values that can guarantee social cohesion? Over the past few months, I've been raising policy issues which I believe are crucially important for the future of our country. This is my job as a member of parliament. Moreover, it is my duty as a conservative member of parliament to contribute to debates and offer policy solutions from a conservative perspective. Otherwise, what is the point of being involved in politics. I am in politics to defend ideas, real conservative ideas, because I passionately care about the future of our country, because I know that the free market conservative philosophy has the best solutions to ensure our society is more prosperous, secure, and peaceful. However, my party's stand on several issues have convinced me that under the current leadership, it has all but abandoned its core conservative principles. I still cannot understand how a party that is supposed to defend free markets supports a small cartel that artificially increases the price of milk, chicken, and eggs for millions of Canadian consumers. More importantly, supply management has become one of the main stumbling blocks to an agreement with the, with the United States on NAFTA. Former Conservative leaders Brian Mulroney and Rona Ambrose agree that it should be put on the table. But the Conservative Party has been siding with the Liberal government. It also supports the retaliatory tariff of the Liberal government, even though this is going to hurt our businesses and consumers. Even though Canada has no realistic ch chance of winning a trade war with our neighbor 10 times bigger. Even though we could relaunch the negotiation if we put supply management on the table and if we accept President Trump's offer to negotiate a dismantling of all barriers as the European Union has done. The Liberals are playing politics with this crucially important trade file. They are endangering the 20% of our economy that depends on trade with the US and Canada's future prosperity. But instead of leading as a principal conservative and defending the interests of Canada and Canadians, Andrew Scheer is following the Trudeau Liberals. I was told that internal polls are showing that the Liberals' response to Trump is very popular. And that in six months, if the polls change, the party stand may change too. The same thing happened in reaction to my tweets on diversity and multiculturalism. This is another crucial debate for the future of our country. Do we want to emphasize our ethnic and religious differences and exploit them to buy votes as the Liberals are doing? Or emphasize what unites us and the values that can guarantee social cohesion. Just like in other Western societies, grappling with this issue, a large number of Canadians, and certainly a vast majority of Conservatives, are worried that we are heading in the wrong direction. But it is not politically correct to raise such questions. Instead of leading the debate and pushing back against all the unfair accusations, 
Andrew Scheer chose to avoid the controversy. He and several of my colleagues disavowed me. They are so afraid of criticism by the left and, yes, by the media, that they prefer to let down millions of supporters across the country that would like us to tackle this issue. When the Liberal government recently renewed the unfair and ineffective equalization formula for another five years, I was the only one to criti criticize it. Not a word from my conservative colleagues. A conservative party that supports free markets should also advocate the end of corporate subsidies. It is not only the principal thing to do, it could also be popular if we defend it in a consistent way. Canadians are tired of paying taxes to bail out Bombardier, Ford and other businesses. Instead of taking up this idea, Andrew Scheer announced, announced that he will name a regional minister for all the regional development agencies in the country, as opposed to having only one minister overseeing them, as is the case now. He wants a minister from Quebec to distribute subsidies to Quebec, a minister from Atlantic Canada to distribute subsidies to Atlantic Canada, and so on. The conservative solution should be to abolish these wasteful agencies. What my party proposed is to make them more efficient at buying votes with taxpayers' money. How can we expect a conservative government to adopt any conservative reform when it comes to power if it cannot even articulate a clear stand and defend them before it is elected. I'm now convinced what we will get if Andrew Scheer becomes a prime minister is just a more moderate version of the disastrous Trudeau government. I have come to realize over the past year that this party is too intellectually and morally corrupt to be reformed. I know for a fact that many in the caucus privately oppose supply management, but buying votes in a few key writings is more important than defending the interests of our Canadians. The whole strategy of the party is to play identity politics, pander to various interest groups and buy votes with promises just like the Liberals. The Conservative Party tries to avoid important, yes, controversial issues of concern to Conservatives and Canadians in general. It is afraid to articulate any coherent philosophy to support its position. Every public declaration is tested with polls and focus groups. The result is a bunch of platitudes that don't offend anybody, but also don't mean anything and don't motivate anyone. Andrew Scheer keeps talking about his positive conservative vision, but nobody knows what that vision is. The Conservative Party has abandoned conservative. It does not represent them anymore and it has nothing of substance to offer Canadians looking for a political alternative. If we want conservative principles to win the battle of ideas, we have to defend them openly, with passion and with conviction. That is what I want to do. And this is why, as of today, I'm no longer a member of the Conservative Party of Canada. I want to do politics differently. I will find another way to give a voice to millions of Canadians. And I will continue to fight for freedom, responsibility, fairness, and respect.